Happy Sunday, Creative Cooks! Welcome back to another episode of the Creative Phoebe Cooks channel. I'm Phoebean, and today we're making chickpea curry with kale. As always, it's a scrumptious dish that is naturally high in protein, very robust in flavors, and pairs well with rice or your favorite steamed grain or bread, so you can have it for lunch any day of the week. Before I continue on with today's recipe video, I've got a just for you. Now, if you're finding it challenging to maintain a consistent and a high protein intake while on a plant-based diet, and you're not able to achieve your fitness or your lifestyle goals, believe me, I've been there multiple times. You're probably thinking about doing things a bit differently. And because of that, I want to invite you to my first online high protein meal plan workshop coming up this Thursday, October 17th. You gotta mark your calendars for that, cause here's why. During the workshop, I'll be sharing with you three things that are stopping you from meeting your daily protein intake. And to resolve all of that, I'll be showing you how to tailor a high protein meal plan that's gonna work for you in your current season. To add to that, I'll be sharing my top list of high priority and unprocessed protein rich food items that you can have as a reference guide to help you add more variety to your meal options while catering to a healthy high protein diet y'all i'm really excited to connect with you this thursday be sure to use the link below so you can sign up for your spot for the workshop so you can start seeing results that you have been looking forward to you can also share this link with friends and family because here's the thing when you attend a workshop together you can be able to share knowledge that you gained and be able to keep each other accountable on this journey to maintain consistency on your high protein meal plan journey season whatsoever you want to term it all right i'm looking forward to it now let's continue on with today's recipe i'm so excited for this chickpea curry and kale so good making this curry will make you feel like you brought india to your house and you'll be dancing the entire time my sister pointed out that the aroma of this chickpea curry with kale recipe reminded her of chana masala have you had that before in fact i realized that the ingredients to use for the latter were indeed similar to what i used to make this dish and fun fact We'll be making our own unique spice blend for this recipe, which is key to making this dish so delicious that you'll have it on repeat. So, you know what's up. Let's get right to it and make this chickpea curry with kale. Start off by preparing some white onions. You will need a lot of onions for this recipe and white onions are the best to use so you can season it how you like. Other onions like the yellow ones may add some level of sweetness to the dish that you may not like or find it hard to mask especially when you're adding so many beautiful spices. Save the onion peelings to make a delicious vegetable stock for all your fall and winter recipes that you plan on making soon. I have the recipe link that just popped up on your screen. You can check out our video. I also have the full recipe on my website. Slice the onions thinly and set them aside. Next, we'll peel a few garlic cloves. That will be about six to seven garlic cloves depending on how much they weigh all together. Chop them and set them aside. Then grate a fresh turmeric and ginger. After watching this video, in case you don't have fresh turmeric root on hand, you might be tempted to use turmeric powder instead, but I promise you that a dish will not taste the same. In fact, it will have some form of an unpleasant aftertaste that can be quite off-putting for this particular curry. The same goes for ginger. Grated the ginger and set it aside. We also have three to four dry bay leaves and one juicy habanero pepper for extra level of spice. Live it out if you're not tolerant to that level of spice. 
and let's get to my favorite part making the spice blend combine all the spices in a mixing bowl and the spices will include coriander powder allspice powder cumin powder paprika powder cinnamon powder crushed red pepper flakes core sea salt ground black pepper fenugreek powder and cardamom powder i didn't show you me putting it into the bowl but i did crush it and i added it into the spice blend this is going to make one robust spice blend mix it up and set it aside and now that we are all done with that it's time to cook and by the way you may find a full recipe for this recipe and all the recipes i share on my channel on my blog at crayfeebie.com in case you want to know the exact measurement for a particular ingredient all right turn on your stove to medium heat and add some olive oil into a large stock pot together with the spices this is the part where you don't want to keep your eyes away from the pot because it can all go wrong in a matter of seconds. Toast the spices for no more than two minutes on medium to low heat to prevent the spices from burning. You just want these to be golden. But since I was here multitasking, cooking, filming from multiple angles, the spices got charred. That's my fancy word for burnt. So guess what? I had to empty the pot. Naturally, I had to clean it up and start all over again because I really did not want that bitter taste to flow through the entire making of the dish. I really don't want this to happen to you because it can be quite frustrating. I also had to make a new spice blend and kept it going. So starting afresh, we've got some olive oil and the new spice blend. Toast the spices for about two minutes, no more than two minutes or else it just burns so quickly. And I believe it's because the spices are in powdered form, which is why you really need to keep a close eye on them. Stir them consistently with a wooden spoon until they get golden. They should just be a nice dark golden color and stirring them will help you quickly see when they turn that nice dark golden color before adding in the next set of ingredients next add in the grated turmeric ginger and habanero pepper if you want less heat just leave the habanero pepper in there just as is but if you want more heat just like i do press the habanero pepper to release its juices stir in the mustard seeds and at this point your entire home will be filled with the beautiful aromas from the certain spices. It's very strong and will linger in your home for about a day or two. So keep that in mind. After sauteing the spices, add in the onions and garlic and saute this combo for about 10 minutes while stirring every now and again to prevent them from burning as a little bit of it will be sticking to the bottom of the pot. Add in the bay leaves and continue sauteing until the onions are golden and caramelized. At this point, if you're making chana masala, this is when you add in the tomatoes. But because I wasn't making chana masala, I was just doing my own thing. I just left it as is. So again, these are recipes you can always customize. Make it your own. Reduce the spice level if you like. Whatever works for you. After all of that caramelization effect, add in water, stir and cover the pot. Bring to a simmer on medium heat. If you're enjoying this video, you like what you're seeing, be sure to give it a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn on all notifications so you don't miss any delightful recipes. In the description box below, I do have a few gifts for you. You can find the links to my meal planners, grocery planners, 
and my free five-step meal prep checklist to help you plan and organize your meal prep options. Download your copies using the link below to get you all set for the week ahead. So for this recipe, I need 750 grams of chickpeas. Stir the contents well, then leave the pot uncovered and simmer for 20 to 25 minutes until the chickpeas are slightly mushy and the liquid has reduced a bit to thicken the curry. So you see, no flour is needed to thicken the curry because the chickpea does a great job doing that. Now while the chickpeas are doing their thing, roughly chop up fresh kale. You can use any kale of your color. Here I have fresh green curly kale. Chop them up roughly. And I'm going to set it aside before harvesting some fresh lemon balm leaves from my garden. So I can complete making this dish. Oh my goodness, this curry is looking and smelling so good. Oh my goodness, stir in the chopped kale and lemon balm leaves. Then simmer the curry for another five minutes until it reaches your desired consistency. Give it a taste to adjust the seasonings. Luckily, the salt and the spice blend was just right for this entire recipe. You see what I did there? Now feel free to add or reduce the salt or the spice level as you prefer. Now when it comes to the entirety of the spices I added in to make the spice blend, I don't know about customizing that. You can play around with it as you like y'all that's it really like here's some boiled white rice i made towards the end of making the curry recipe and you know here's how it all looks when you plate it i also have a side of green plantain chips that i baked which tastes amazing let me know if you like a recipe for that now if you prefer you may serve this meal with a lemon slice to add a settled tartness to the meal. You can also serve this curry with naan or your favorite flatbread. I'm ready to feast and I'm sure you'll absolutely love this one. Remember to download your meal planners using the link below and mark this recipe in your meal planners for this week, next week, whenever you choose. Feel free to double or triple this recipe if you're into batch cooking so you and your loved ones can have as much as you want. Creative Cooks, that's it for today. I look forward to seeing you all during my workshop this Thursday for my online high protein meal plan workshop to help you level up your protein intake on a plant-based diet. I'd appreciate it if you like, comment, and share this chickpea curry with kale recipe with your loved ones. Let me know in the comment section below how it turned out for you. And have a good week. We'll chat again later in another episode. Later!